first of all, thank you, JJ. You know how much I love you. It was so great to get to see you and Sam in Tucson. I really enjoyed spending time with you. I really want to thank everybody here today for being part of this group. I love spending time with like-minded people, uh, people who really know that real estate is the greatest wealth building tool out there. My experience and knowledge in real estate is extensive. And I also have an, a, a passion for coaching. And that is why as a certified life coach, I made the decision to create a coaching program that not only includes real estate, it includes life coaching and performance coaching. It really gives me as a coach an opportunity to help individuals and teams be the best they can be in life and in business. There's really only one thing I'm more passionate about than being a coach, and that's being a grandmother of five adorable grandkids and another one on the way. Enough about me, though. I really am here to bring you value. I'm super excited to talk about six steps that will really help you be an offer-making machine, and it will help you stay persistent and consistent in your business. Before we talk about those six steps, I do want to talk a little bit about why I believe a portion of the SMART goals need to be thrown out the window. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, the SMART goal acronym stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Realistic, and excuse me, Timely. And I believe instead we need to take massive action. I'm going, this is going to be very and very engaging today. So I'm going to have be having you raise your hands. Who here, if you know Grant Cardone, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone is, uh, he's a rock star, first of all, and he has a quote that I love. When we limit the amount of success we desire, we are also going to limit what will be required in order to achieve that success. And I believe this wholeheartedly. If we, for example, set a realistic, part of the SMART goal, and attainable goal, then our mindset around the realistic and attainable goal will also affect the actions we take to reach that goal. Realistic and attainable goals are average. And with average goals comes average action, average mindset, and absolutely average results. However, if we set massive goals, then the action we take and the mindset we have to reach those goals will be massive as opposed to average. To be super successful in business and in life, we must take average action in all areas of our life. We must set massive goals. If we set attainable goals, we'll be an average partner, an average parent, and most definitely an average business owner. Now, I am in no way judging the individuals who are fine with being average. But I believe that we are not here today on this call to be average. Raise your hand if you have an overwhelming desire to be average. Does anybody here have an overwhelming desire to be average? Nobody's hand should be raised. Uh, if you think about all of the negative Nellies, the ones who thought we were nuts for getting in this business, chances are they're fine with being average. The super successful, however, did not become super successful setting goals that are realistic. Look at Steve Jobs. Apple's was on the verge of bankruptcy when he stepped in. He didn't set realistic goals. He set massive goals and he took massive action. So now you kind of all know my opinion of SMART goals. Today, what I really want to focus on is what it takes to be an offer-making machine, what it takes to be super successful in your real estate investment business. As a coach, the reason I'm so passionate about my clients taking massive action and doing whatever it takes to be an offer-making machine is because after over 7,000 coaching sessions with investors across the nation, I know getting comfortable making offers is by far the biggest hurdle to overcome. I also know your business will not grow unless you're persistently and consistently making offers. Also, establishing systems 
to allow your business to grow. What we need to do here is take the emotion out of making offers. This is just one of the ways that we can become an offer making machine. Uh, we have to know there's no room for excuse me, there's no room for emotions in making offers. Making offers is simply a numbers game. And Scott Jenkins knows this, absolutely knows this. It will all, uh, today I'm going to be asking a lot of questions uh, and I, or at least asking questions and I would love for you to participate. I would love for you to raise your hand. I'm going to be sharing some tips and tools on what it takes to be persistent and consistent. So I would recommend that if you don't have a notepad, you grab one. Today, I'm also going to be sharing a great opportunity for you all to join a mastermind group that I've developed for real estate investors. Uh, who are ready to master the art of making offers and who are also in need of implementing systems in order to be persistent and consistent in their business. I'm going to be offering an incredible discount, which I'll discuss later in the presentation. So let's get started. The first thing that I would like you to write down is I am an offer making machine. I am an offer making machine. Write it down, tattoo it on your forehead, whatever it takes for you to remember that being an offer making machine is a must in order for you to become successful in this business. Now I can't see everybody uh, when, when you raise your hands, but raise your hand for me anyway, if you feel as if you're already an offer making machine, if you're an already an offer making machine. Okay, I see some hands that are shaking. No, raise your hand if you have made over 30 written offers, over 30 written offers. Okay, now raise your hand if you're so persistent and so consistent in this business that you could stand in front of the mirror today and say, I would hire myself tomorrow for what I accomplished in my business today. By the way, this is a really good strategy, a really good tip. And just ask yourself, would you hire yourself tomorrow for what you accomplished today? If the answer is no, then we need to up our game. Uh, raise your hand, then one last time, raise your hand if you would like to be persistent and consistent in your business and you would like to be an offer making machine. Everybody's hand should be raised. Everybody, unless you're already an offer making machine, everybody's hand should be raised. I'm seeing a ton of hands pop up. Thank you for that. Having systems and taking the emotion out of making offers is key to success in this business. And the six steps I'm about to share with, with, with you will help you be persistent and consistent for you to become an offer making machine. So step one, step one, why? And I would write this down. And I know that we have all been asked our why. Why did we get into this business? Your why is important. It really can help you be persistent and remain consistent. However, we need to go deep with that why. If your why for an example is financial freedom, we need to go deeper than that. Why do we want financial freedom? Once you've dug deep and you really know your why, I suggest you write it down and put it someplace where you see it every day, in your car, uh, at your computer, at the mirror where you brush your teeth twice a day. So that's step one. Step two, the plan. Step two, the plan. We must have a plan. And most importantly, we must stick with the plan. Who here, and I hope everybody's hands is going to raise, who here knows with every fiber of their being that building wealth through real estate works? Who here knows that? Okay, we should absolutely at this point all know this. I see some hands being raised. Thank you for that. Thank you. The great news is we don't have to reinvent the wheel. If we've seen someone's plan work and we all have, then it will work for you too as long as you take massive action and stick with the plan. Changing the plan because you made seven offers or even 30 and didn't get an offer accepted will not get you closer to your why. 
we may need to make adjustments along the way, perhaps, and in a lot of cases, the adjustment needs to be made in our offer. Uh, we Maybe we're doing too much in repairs. It could be that we're looking for too high of a return on our investment. Now, I'm in no way telling you to take a 5% return on your investment. Uh, however, if you're looking for a 30% return on your investment right now, your market may not allow for that. Most don't. Maybe, and this is huge, you're not taking the time to build rapport with the agent, with the seller, or perhaps you're asking for long, too long of an inspection period. These are all adjustments that can be made while sticking with the plan. So the plan, step two, has two parts, two parts. Part one, decide how we're going to invest in real estate. Is it wholesale, rehabbing, burr, private money, house hacking? Our how becomes our niche. And I would write that down. Our how becomes our niche. Part two of the plan, pick your market. Pick your market. Step two, the plan is critical. And we must stick with our niche and stick with our market until we've mastered our niche and know our market. This is a must. If we don't follow step two, the plan, we end up all over the place, not having a niche and not knowing any market like we should. And this happens to a lot of real estate investors. The main reason they did not stick with the plan is because they didn't take massive action within the plan. They set average goals, gave average effort, then blamed the market, the competition, or both. Then changed their niche, their market, or both, and started the cycle all over again, giving average effort. We really must take massive action until we know everything about our market and we've mastered and created success in our niche. Who here, raise your hand if you have a niche, if you know what your niche is. Okay, I see, I see some hands raised. Thank you for that. It's really important to stick with that niche. So now we're going to move on to step three. Step three, generate leads. And we all know we need to generate leads. Uh, generating leads is a must in this business and in any business. At this point, we've dug deep. We know our why. We've decided our niche. We've picked our market. Unfortunately, and I'm sure all of you know this, leads are not just going to fall into our lap. We need to take massive action. The good news is that there's free leads, and I'm going to share some tips on where to get free leads. I'm sure you know there's also leads that we pay for. As a coach, I strongly recommend that you run numbers on at least 100 properties and make at least 30 offers before you pay for leads. There are too many free leads out there for you to waste your money paying for leads until you know, and I would write this down, you know your market, know your state contract, know your purchase and sell agreement, get comfortable speaking with agents, sellers, and wholesalers. And finally, and most important, we don't hesitate to pick up the phone to make an offer. Then if we want to pay for leads, great. Just don't learn the market learn how to run numbers and be uncomfortable making offers with leads you've paid good money for. Uh, raise your hand, and, I, and a lot of hands should actually be raised on this one. Raise your hand if you've heard, said, or believe there's no deals on the MLS. There's no deals on the MLS if you've heard, said, or believe. Okay, I see some hands popping up. Thank you. Thank you uh, for being transparent. And I will say this to you, that's an excuse. It's an absolute excuse. Excuses will not get us closer to our why. Uh, as a coach, I've heard them all. I don't have any money. I'm new. I'm afraid they will say yes. I'm afraid they'll say no. There's too much competition. There's not enough inventory. There's no deals 
on the MLS. Excuses are a way for people to justify why they're not doing something. And in business and in life, excuses will not help us be the best person and business owner I know we all want to be. And that's why we're here today. I have a client who at any given time has 10 rehabs going per quarter. Uh, When I first started coaching her, she had one unfinished rehab and I believe a couple of wholesale deals under her belt. English is not her first language. She's under 30 years old and killing it in this business. As her coach, we focused on we focus on her being persistent and consistent in making offers, setting up systems, which has allowed her business to grow into a seven figure business. Today, it's rare that she even walks into a rehab. She takes massive action in all areas of her life. I have another client who made enough money in the middle of a pandemic, another excuse I've heard as a coach, to be able to replace his nine to five income and do this business full time. He also takes massive action. He just put two properties under contract and both leads were free free. I share this with you because the first client I spoke about uses two lead generating strategies, two, and both are free, the MLS and wholesalers, the MLS and wholesalers. The second client I spoke about put his latest two projects under contract. Both came from the MLS, both of them. So who here is ready to stop making excuses and become an offer making machine. Everybody's hand should be raised. Everybody's hand should be raised. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of hands raised. Thank you, thank you for that. Okay, now we're moving on to step four. Step four, run numbers. Run numbers until you know your market. Run numbers until it takes you less than 15 minutes to run numbers. Run numbers until you know immediately the cost per square foot on the asking price is a no-brainer. One of the things that I would like you to think about when you're running numbers is let's not think about getting the deal. It's almost like when we were learning multiplication. We're, we're, we, we're just powering through until we know all of our multiplication. Same thing with running numbers. You want to run numbers until it becomes a daily routine. After you've run numbers on 100 or more properties, you'll know almost instantly when a property it, uh, meets, or is a deal within your niche. I mean, if you're a wholesaler, and I'm sure Scott knows this, you'll know almost immediately that there's money on the table for the wholesaler and money on the table for the buyer. If your niche is Airbnb, you'll know almost immediately that it's Airbnb cash cow. So who here on on the call has an additional 30 minutes a day? 30 minutes a day. And I know we're all busy, but I'm here to say everybody's hand should be raised. Everybody's hand should be raised. Uh, We can all find an extra 30 minutes a day. We can turn off the TV. We can get up an hour early. We can stay off social media or at minimum, take it off your phone. You can always run over to your laptop if you have to get onto Facebook. I'm sure everybody here knows that there are 168 hours in a week. Uh, Who here still has their day job? Who here still has their day job? Raise your hand if you still have your day job. Okay, quite a few people still have their day job. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Thank you for raising your hand. Uh, so if you, it, with your day job, let's just say you, with your day job and your commute at 60 hours a week, and you give yourself 70 hours a week for sleep and personal hygiene, hygiene. you give your family three hours a day, three hours a day, and yourself one hour a day of me time, which is very important. That still leaves you 10 hours per week for your business, which is well over 30 minutes a day, okay? So if we spend 30 minutes a day for 30 days running numbers in our market, we will not only know our market, we'll build confidence, we'll be able to run numbers a lot faster than 30 minutes, and we'll know within minutes that the property meets our criteria within our niche, Now, the mastermind group that I spoke about earlier is an eight-week mastermind group. 
designed to help you break through any fear you may have in making offers. Uh, it also is designed to help you set up systems so you and your business can grow. And it's just mastermind groups are an incredible way to be a part of a group that supports each, each other in taking massive action to reach your goals in life and in business. And I'll go over again a few more in that in details in just a few minutes. Uh, in order to run numbers, we need to go back to step three, generate leads. Free leads are everywhere. Realtor.com, Zillow, Redfin, Wholesalers, and the MLS. Before building my real estate coaching program, I was a real estate and business coach for a Fortune 500 company. And while with this company, I coached thousands of individuals. And the ones who made excuses did not grow their business. And an excuse that I heard repeatedly was, I heard that real estate agents don't want to work with real estate investors. Don't let this be your excuse. My clients and not just the two I shared with you have had most of their deals come from real estate agents. So I'm going to share two tips on finding agents who will work with investors. Two tips. First, and, and again, two tips that will also get you free leads, right? Call every brokerage firm in your area and ask to speak to the broker. Let the broker know that you work with a network of investors across the nation and that you're currently looking for property in his or her market. Ask them if they can recommend someone within their office who likes to work with investors or who is an investor. Let the broker know that you love paying real estate agents commissions, and then also let them know that you educate real estate agents on how to invest, how investors analyze property to rehab, to rent, and to Airbnb. And I would use that language, rehabs, rentals, and Airbnbs, because so many people want Airbnbs anymore. This can do two things for you. Uh, the broker will share agents who work with investors. And again, perhaps they are an investor and they can't take all of the deals. And in addition, they may invite you or you can take massive action and ask for you to come to their office and speak to agents on how investors analyze Airbnb properties, as an example. It's very easy to get into the door of a brokerage firm. Number two, go to Bigger Pockets. Who here is familiar with Bigger Pockets? Raise your hand if you're familiar with Bigger Pockets. Okay, we've got some hands raised up. Great. Okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Bigger Pockets is a great resource. They have over 2 million people in there interested in real estate investing. And you don't have to be a pro subscriber to take advantage of Bigger Pockets. Uh, to find agents who want to work with investors or, in, or who are investors, you can go to Bigger Pockets, and at the top of the page, you'll see network. The, yeah, you'll see network. There's a drop down. You select real estate agent or realtor. I can't remember exactly what's there. Then you're going to type in your zip code or zip codes and uh, additional information. And Bigger Pockets actually matches you up with agents. Now, we're not going to wait for the agent to contact us. We're, remember, we're here. We're taking massive action, right? We're going to reach out to every agent that Bigger Pockets matched us up with. You want to make sure that when you do reach out to them, you're building rapport. You're sharing your criteria. This business, and I would really like us all, you know, this is really important. This business is a numbers game. The higher the number in analyzing properties, making offers, adding agents, adding buyers, adding wholesalers, the more successful you will be in this business. The higher the number in adding hard money lenders and private money lenders, the more opportunity you ha will have to fund more deals, which leads me to step five. Step five is money, money. We should always be working on obtaining money. Money should be time blocked into our calendar. And, and I would write this down. We should be spending at least an hour on money per week, an hour on money per week. 
whether we are talking to a local bank, dialing up hard money lenders, or giving our private money presentation, money is needed to scale this business. I was on a coaching session a couple of weeks ago with a client of mine, and he was super excited to share with me that he just had received over $250,000 in private money. And his latest private money lender was actually approached by other investors as well. He went with my client because he was professional. He built rapport. He gave a presentation where the others just sent a text, hey, I'm looking for, for funding on a deal. Uh, don't let this be you. You really want to co come across as being professional. This client is no longer using any of his own money to fund deals. And that's huge. Huge. Uh, money is everywhere, and it doesn't have to be the millionaire next door. Several years ago, I shared a private money trifle that I'm a huge fan of with a client of mine. And he customized it for his business. Then he put the trifle at his scope of work. His HVAC guy picked it up and then insisted on having a meeting and is now one of his private money lenders. Now, I know you have probably all heard that joint ventures are the most expensive money out there. However, joint ventures don't always have to be a 50-50 split. Uh, sometimes the split's in the favor of you, and sometimes it's in, in favor of the other individual. You know, several years ago, my par partner and I were building some spec homes and townhouses, and we partnered with the GC and our private money lender. When the projects were completed, we split the profit three ways after our private money lender had received his interest. He funded the entire deal from the purchase of the land to the construction cost, and his, his return should reflect that. Now, if we hustle, we find the deal, have the knowledge, manage the project, bring in the hard money lender, then we can have a JV partner bring in the gap. Uh, in this place, in this case, it absolutely would not be a 50-50 split. It would be in your favor. I say this because there are some individuals out there who aren't as comfortable being in second position, filling in the gap, yet they would love to be a part of a project. Uh, many, many years ago, my partner and I wanted to buy 80 acres we thought we could wholesale. And at the time, we didn't even call it wholesaling. Actually, we called it pushing paper. I contacted the owner, made an offer, and he accepted. Uh, we wrote up the contact, contract to reflect a $1,000 earnest money deposit. And we were shocked when the owner came back with a $35,000 earnest money deposit. Now, this is a normal deposit for California and a lot of other areas. But this was, again, many, many years ago. It was dirt and in Arizona where we can still get away with less than a $2,000 earnest money deposit. Um, I'll never forget my partner dropping to his knees and saying, how, you know, how are we going to come up with $35,000? Well, we brought in a JV partner. And not only did this JV partner bring in the 35K, he brought in the buyer. Our profit on that deal after splitting it with our partner was over $100,000. And to date, that's the largest profit on a transaction I've had. It would have never happened if we hadn't brought in a JV partner. I'm moving on to step six, the final step here. Step six, be persistent and consistent. We have to find a way to be so persistent, so consistent, it becomes routine. None of this matters if we're not sticking with our market, our niche, and taking massive action. So how do we do that? How do we stick with it? How do we stay persistent and consistent? Uh, how do we get past the initial excitement of this business? This business is not easy. Uh, there will be difficult days, difficult rehabs, and long days, particularly for all the individuals who still have their day job. But I promise you, it will be worth it when you've left your day job and you're living your best life. So who here wants to leave their day job? Who here would like to leave their day job? Everybody that has a day job probably wants to leave their day job. I see a lot of hands popping up. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'm going to share with you now three tips that will help you be persistent and consistent. Persistent and consistent. Number one, join a group of like-minded people. 
an accountability group, a mastermind group, or a group like this one. You're networking, you're learning, you're building rapport, relationships. Number two, track your goals. Who here set goals for 2021? Raise your hand if you've set goals for 2021. And I really hope that everybody's hand is raised. Okay, I see a lot. Thank you for that. A lot of hands coming up. Great. Now, pop your hands back down and let's be really transparent here. Let me ask you this. Who has looked at their Q4 goals in the last week? Q4 goals in the last week. I'm not seeing quite as many hands raised. Our goals should be tracked at minimum weekly. Uh, this is how we gauge where we're at in our business and in our life. This is how we make adjustments, not changes, adjustments that need to be made in our business. Okay, tip three on how to be persistent and, and persistent and consistent. Hire a performance coach. Hire a performance coach to hold you accountable to taking massive action, help you overcome limiting beliefs, help you create systems and routines and help you through difficult situations that do come up in this business. Uh, who here knows Brandon Turner? Brandon Turner. Raise your hand if some people didn't quite raise their hands down. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Brandon Turner is, uh, Brandon Turner is a Bigger Pockets podcaster and an very successful real estate investor. He said, and I quote, I've made millions from my performance coach. Uh, Bigger Pockets is again a great resource. They have, if you're unaware, they have several calculators, a lot like the deal analyzer. Several. They have a wholesale calculator. They have an Airbnb calculator. They have a Burr calculator, and there's several others. You can pop in there, and you can use those calculators about five times without being a pro subscriber. For me, I think it's, it's worth it to be a pro subscriber. It costs about $400 a year. And in addition to the 2 million members I spoke about, there are 67,000 companies, including those real estate agents I spoke about, and hard money lenders. Hard money lenders in bigger pockets. It's just an excellent resource. So now I'm going to recap on the six steps. Uh, number one, why? Dig deep. Two, the plan, which has two parts. Pick your market, pick your niche. Three, generate leads. Four, run numbers. Five, money. And six, be persistent and consistent. I really am looking forward to serving and supporting you in your life and your business. I really want to thank all of you for being here today. And it is back to the rock star, JJ.